what's up everyone welcome back to the channel this should be a good one for you so if your k-series motor sounds like this you just tuned into the right video because that's my motor and we're going to be fixing that right now so if i'm being honest the car has been doing that for a few months now uh, i've been trying to ignore it but it's actually getting worse to the point where it needs to be done so it's a common problem on the k series i think it's even more common on the k24s like the crvs the accords you know those those mo those cars they have this issue the intake vtc gear the uh, 50 degree one or whatever whichever one they're using the intake gear it uh it starts to bleed out it doesn't hold oil pressure anymore so when you start it up there's a little plunger inside the gear. It's not locked. It's actually lost oil pressure. It's unlocked. And that rattling is the gear just rattling until it fills up five, 10 seconds, however, and then the plunger locks it again and that's when your rattling stops. Uh, I've been using, this is the original VTC gear from my car, from the RSX, from the K20. So it is, what is it, 19 years old now? Uh, you know, it's almost 20 years old. So, I got a really good life out of it, and I just bought another OEM replacement one. Uh, I bought a new bolt, and I'm just going to show you guys how to repair, uh, how to replace it. I'm going to try to do it a little differently without removing the cams or the uh, the timing cover. I'm going to try. I've never done it that way, but I'm trying to look to not have to split a lot of this stuff open. So, uh, obviously, it's very simple. You're going to start with taking your valve cover off. That's what I'm starting with first. You've seen me do it before, so I'm gonna take that off and then we're gonna see what the next step is. All right, so we got our valve cover off. I put the motor on top dead center. So as you guys have seen already in my videos on when I've rebuilt this whole motor top to bottom, how to time a K-series, we have our two hash marks right here lined up horizontally next to each other. The uh, ATI crank pulley, I doubt you're gonna be able to really see it on camera, but let me try to get a light so you can kind of see uh, the marks, yeah, it's kind of hard, but you could see the if you could see the uh, TDC marking on the crank, that lines up with our little arrow on the uh, the chain case, meaning our motor's on time right now. So what I'm gonna attempt to do first is actually loosen, just loosen, not take it off, just crack it loose, the intake cam gear bolt and the exhaust cam, uh, yeah, the exhaust gear bolt. I'm gonna try to crack those loose first before I do anything else, because if that's gonna give me a hard time, well, there's no point in doing anything else. Those gotta come loose first. I'll explain why the exhaust gear has to come loose as well. So I was able to crack them loose by hand. That's good. We can proceed forward. The way I did it was, um, I don't know if I can get this going right here, a 24 millimeter wrench and a really long pry bar. Uh, intake gear is a 17 mil. Exhaust gear is a 14 mil. Now we're going to go on the side of the chain case, remove the tensioner cover. Put this back on top, Dad. I saw the cams move a little bit. Put it back on top dead and then remove the chain tensioner cover. So hopefully you guys are going to be able to see what's actually going to happen. And uh, I'm going to be moving the motor backwards. So turning it counterclockwise slowly until I see that pl the little lever move up. So you can already see it starting to move up. I'm going to go a little bit more. About right there. Now let's see if that's enough for us to lock it in. All right, so that was enough. So now I'm gonna go back clockwise and take the tension off. And right there, you can see it's locked. And now we remove some of the tension. So now we go back up top. So now we're back up top, back to top that center. And you can see right here, there's actually slack in the chain. Uh, that's what we wanted. 
So the next thing we're going to do is actually remove this upper cam cap right here. Oh, I felt loose. Remove this upper cam cap and um, start with removing the exhaust cam. I'm going to set the camera down and you're going to see how I'm going to attempt this. I'm not going to say do it because I've never done it this way, but we're going to attempt it this way. So we've reached this point right now. Okay. The upper guide is off. I'm getting ready to remove starting the exhaust gear first so I can get that out since it'll be easier to slide out of the chain than the intake gear. Here's what my plan is. If you remember from years ago when I rebuilt this engine, I actually installed a drag cartel lower timing chain guide. Uh, my plan is hoping that this lower chain guide will actually hold the chain on the crank sprocket in case something happens I actually the chain just drops a little bit it will not drop off of the crank meaning it'll still be on time on the crank up top we can obviously redo it because we have access to the cams that's my plan that is my hope we're gonna try that out so as I explained before we're gonna start by removing the exhaust cam gear once that's out of the way we're gonna hold some tension on it and then wrap it on top of one of the uh, cam cap studs to keep some tension on the chain or you could use a bungee cord or something like that just to make sure you keep tension so the chain uh, doesn't drop let's see what happens <laughs> So there you guys saw kind of how I have, I'm, I'm attempting to do this. This chain actually feels in really good shape that it doesn't want to drop. It, it, it just has tension wanting to sit there. So that, that's a good thing. Um, some of you got, some of you might have seen, I didn't see, but I heard the exhaust gear actually jump once I took the gear off. So we're gonna, don't be afraid, you know, we can adjust them just like how we were doing when we had to adjust timing from the beginning. We'll take care of that. So. Now those are off. Here is, uh, well, obviously the old gears. Here's the part number for the new one. This is a 50 degree. Now, what I'm, what I read a little bit was this is actually a revised gear. Revised as in Honda knows they've had these problems with these gears, so they actually did something with it to, I guess, I'm assuming, prevent this from happening in the future. Um, do I have the revised one? I don't know. I didn't really look into the part numbers that deep, but I might I might have it. I will figure it out. You guys will know the part numbers better than I do. So that's gonna get installed right now with a new bolt.
it's obviously the next day so from that last clip you just saw I was wrestling trying to get that exhaust cam gear back on uh yeah this is not working the way I planned so what ended up happening is I just kind of cut the camera because it was taking me way too long and I needed to really assess what was happening I got it pretty close and then I heard click 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 and chain got really tight so I looked down the pin actually shot out of the tensioner the tensioner completely uh, engaged so that kind of pissed me off so what I ended up doing right now is I actually pulled the tensioner off completely I just took it out uh, compressed it I haven't put it back in yet but the tensioner is out I was able to get the cams on and uh, let me walk you through what I did to get to this point so as you can see both cams are on I don't have a bolt in this yet but it is uh, fully seated chain is on timing is uh, slightly off okay well so timing is slightly off the wrenches are actually not holding the cams I've using that to adjust them what I got holding them is I actually put the cam lock tool from Honda to hold them uh, in time right now I double kept double checking my crank because that kept moving uh, that's on top dead right now again it's hard to tell on camera but that's on top dead so what I'm going to do right now is put the tensioner back in, that's locked, put that back in, and then put our bolt in. I'm not going to torque the exhaust bolt yet, because like I said, we're a little bit off timing. I'm not sure if that's because the chain still is really tight. Like this chain, it has some slack, even without a tensioner, but it, it, it's not moving much, and I believe... Um, if once all this is synced once i rotate the engine i can probably get it back to timing but that's where i'm at so this method probably would work with a stock time and chain tensioner but since this is a uh this is an inline pro time and chain tensioner i believe it held too much tension still on this chain it looks like good news it worked out i'm wondering if i should have just took that tensioner off from the beginning uh, so if you plan on doing it this way without removing your cams, compress your tensioner and then remove it. So that, that's what my suggestion would be because that worked out. I just rotated the motor like four, five, six times. Every time it comes back around, our timing is, is marked up. It's lined up. So I removed everything. Um, what, the, what I'm going to do now is torque the tensioner bolts. Well, I'm going to try to get a torque wrench in there. It's hard with the motor in the car. Uh, then torque the exhaust cam gear. The exhaust cam gear is 53 foot-pounds. I don't think I mentioned it uh, when I did it. Uh, the exhaust or the intake gear, but the intake gear was 83 foot-pounds when I torqued that. I know you guys saw that in the previous clip or yesterday when I did it. Uh, so that was 53. Uh, 83 is the intake. 53 is the exhaust. The tensioner, I'm not really sure. It might be like 16 or 19, something like that. Uh, and then we're going to put the upper chain guide on and uh, pretty much put everything back together at, at this point is what it's looking like. And then uh, we're we'll clean the RTV off of the time and chain case so we can put a new cover on. extra upgrade I'm throwing on while I'm in there I was kind of waiting to to throw this upgrade on is a uh, a drag cartel time and chain tensioner cover uh, I bought this I don't even know when I bought this I just kind of bought this because there was a sale going on somewhere and I was like I just gotta buy something but um the reason I got it was because it's an o-ring backed uh, so you can kind of see the o-ring on it right there I don't have to deal with cleaning RTV if I ever have to take this cover off like that's why I always hated taking the cover off because right now it's such a pain trying to clean all the RTV off in that little space and also because I have the ATI crank pulley that's not coming off unless you use a puller like that's something to note it's you're not getting it off you need some sort of puller to pull these off just because the tolerances for the pulley to the crank snout are so tight you ain't getting it off so I'm trying to work around the bottom of the uh, timing or the tensioner cover because the pulley's in the way it, it's a pain so I cleaned it off as best as I could. We're gonna put this cover on and uh, then we're gonna try to start it, cross our fingers. All right, everything is put back together. This is pretty much the moment of truth. 
I've timed many motors, uh, many, many motors. I, I never get nervous starting up a motor because I, I pretty much know what I'm doing. I'm nervous because I've never done it this way. I physically couldn't see the lower, the chain on the lower crank sprocket. That's what got me a little nervous. So it's either gonna start up, we got no problems, or we're gonna bend some valves and I'm just gonna quit with this car and sell it because that would really suck. I got, I'm not putting any money into this car this year. So, uh, and hopefully the noise is gone. I don't know, let's see what happens. It should be fine. It's a little hard on startup because obviously no idle air control valve. The motor is stone cold, uh, but that's why she got to warm up a little bit, but sweet. All right, that works. So now that the job is done, uh, I'm gonna touch upon some points that I think I skipped over very quickly. Um, the way I'm gonna start doing it from now on is gonna be kind of the same way except removing the tensioner. So I'm going to be turning the motor counterclockwise to take some tension off of it, pin it, remove the tensioner, and then remove both cam gears. Uh, that seemed to work a lot better. I should have done it that way from the beginning, but now you guys know if you're gonna try it this way, remove the tensioner, lock it, remove it, and then when you take the tensioner out, put it in a vise and completely compress the tensioner. That way when you put it in, it'll be a lot easier and you'll have more slack. Um, other than that, another thing I want to touch upon was actually locking the intake gear. You might have caught it. I, I might have done it too fast. I should have slowed down, but I was kind of in the zone. Uh, after I torqued the intake gear down, I actually grabbed the face of it and twisted it clockwise. And I actually locked the gear. So I'll see if I throw a picture up right now of what an unlocked VTC, or VTC gear looks like and a locked VTC gear looks like. You have to lock it. If you don't lock it it's going to rattle again and you're going to do damage you have to lock it and um i think that's that's pretty much what i kind of uh jumped around really quick between the it's all in the gears now i do want to show you the part number i showed you the part number for the gear i don't know if i showed you the part number for the bolt i replaced the bolts on the intake gear i'm almost positive those are like stretched to yield bolts and regardless i should have bought an exhaust gear bolt i didn't I just bought the intake one. So um, here's your part number. It's that 900 number, 932PNA000. That's for your intake gear bolts. I highly suggest replacing them. If you're gonna do that, make sure you put a little bit of oil on the threads. That helps with your torquing, uh, seek with your torque. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully you guys took something from it. You learned pretty much, you know, learned how to replace your VTC gear, you learned how a VTC gear, a VTC gear works, what's on the insides of a VTC gear, you know, just any kind of information. I hope you guys took something from it. And if you did, make sure you drop a like on this video. Make sure you comment on this video. I'm giving you guys all this info. All I ask for in return is some likes, some comments, and let's just continue to grow this channel. With that being said, guys, stay motivated, keep making those streets louder, and I'll catch you in the next one.